Okay, welcome everyone to another Collegiate Conversation. This is a space where we get to have conversations with missionaries from around the Collegiate Church Network. And today I'm joined by people from very different parts of the country and we're talking about sharing our faith. So before we, before we jump in, would you all take a moment to introduce yourselves? So Annalisa, how about you start? Yeah, hi, my name is Annalisa Kelly and I'm at H2O in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And uh, I've been with uh, on staff with Collegiate for over five years now. All right, Alfonso, how about, how about you next? Yeah, hey, I'm Alfonso Mack. I'm on staff with uh, H2O BG. I'm down here in Bowling Green, or up here in Bowling Green, Ohio, I should say. I'm down from you guys, but up in Texas. Uh, and uh, I've been on staff um, with Collegiate for about three years now. My name is Kyle Kroger. I'm one of the pastors at uh, Taproot in San Antonio. And I've been on staff for, I think, a little. 11, 12 years, <laughs> sorry, uh, eight, 10 year or 11 years plus COVID. I don't know. Things, there, there, yeah, <laughs> things have changed. There you go. There's a, there's a point after five, eight years where it all blurs together. Right. So, um, and I, I'm Mike, I'm also up on staff here at H2O in Kalamazoo. And it's, again, it's a gift to be, to be joined by you all. So let, let me set the stage here, uh, of this conversation about sharing our faith through various various channels, there's been this question that I've seen on our college campuses and really in, in much of the church in the United States of how, how do we still share our faith in a COVID world? At the same time, what does it look like on our college campuses as many of our campuses have gone virtual and we, we have not had the same number or, or the same types of interactions with students in the past and still believing that there's space for us to share our faith and to see Jesus's kingdom come in those interactions. And so I, I'm hoping that this will allow us to step into that. And then on, on top of that, there's the space of the different conversations that have been happening on our college campuses regarding race, gender, identity, different things like that. And the opportunities for the gospel to be shared are abundant and clear and the need for Jesus is clear, but I'm excited to hear from each of you guys, how we can scratch the surface just a little bit of what's happening in your communities. And so before we get into that, I'd love to hear from each of you and whoever would like to go first, that's fine. Um, but just when it comes to sharing your faith, I think we probably all have a general through line idea of what that looks like. But I'd love to hear personally, what's that look like for you? And uh, how, how do you approach that in the way you do ministry and the way you live your life? And uh, yeah, if someone wants to jump in there, just share those and we'll, we'll get going. I can kick us off. Um, yeah, when I think about like sharing like our faith, it to me so much is like, it feels overly simple to say like, it's just like a way of life, but like that is kind of like how I feel about it at the end of the day. It's um, so much of the opportunities that come <laughs> to like share our faith is like in the day to day, like as we go, um, just like conversations we can have with students of like in the grocery store, I've gotten to ask like students that I take to the grocery store, like, oh, like what's your spiritual background? Super casual, you know, picking up uh, some bags of rice and asking that. But um, there's like both like, it's a way of life and you just do it as you go, but then also bringing in some intentionality. Like my husband, he's like a, a PT student right now. And it's like, oh, we know that like most of his cohort, like don't know the Lord. So it's like, how can we be intentional to like invite those people over for dinner or have conversations with them um, as we like live throughout our like day-to-day -day lives? Thanks, Annalisa. Well, so for me, I think that I did not I did not think I was an evangelist uh, for really all throughout college. Uh, I experienced a lot of growth in my home groups. We would multiply our home groups a lot, but I thought that was more that I just enjoyed um, partying or enjoyed, you know, all of the things that drew people into a group. Um, but I realized that now that I'm been on staff for a while, I realized that I do have a very evangelistic nature that I want to I'm very focused around the the people outside of our group and getting them into the group. Um, but my story has always been a little bit more of a, 
you know, borderline the bait and switch where you're, you're just trying to get them in. And then later on, they find your, you know, I, I've learned not to do too much of that, or at least not in a way that bothers them. But if I can do it in a way that doesn't bother them, then I'm all for it. And, uh, and so I'm always trying to create ways to figure out what they're wanting that happens to be what we want as well. So if that's a, a, a fun party that is wholesome, then, you know, a lot of people want that. And that's what I used to do. And it's looked a lot different in COVID. If you just go out and say, hey, you want to party with me? People are going to not like that. But we found some really cool uh, techniques this last year that has actually made us more effective at evangelism mm. than we were before COVID. So. Thanks, Kyle. I'm excited to, to hear a little bit more about that. Alfonso, what you got? Yeah, so uh, yeah, there's many ways that people describe sharing their faith. Um, I think uh, for myself, one of the biggest things and it's going off what Annalise was talking about of like uh, it's a way of life. Um, and so for me it's it's trying to a lot of it is trying to build relationships, especially when I think about this year. So I'll just go off of this year. Um, it's trying to build relationships with people in just certain settings um, that aren't necessarily conducive to people just wanting to come to your church and then you have a spiritual conversation with them. Um, but a lot of it is, all right, well, I love doing something. How can I just meet a person <laughs> that could lead to share my faith? So that that means maybe at the rec, if I'm working out, maybe randomly running into a guy and having a conversation. Um, <laughs> happened to me last week didn't end the greatest though <laughs> but it's totally okay um or just finding other ways just to build relationships with people um that are on the fringe so whether that's meeting and having just basic conversations with people in, in my wife and i's apartment complex um uh, I, I feel like that has been like the root of what sharing my faith looks like right now is like all right where do it's like where do i work and play and how can I build relationships in those areas? And just being in ministry out in college ministry, it looks a lot different um, in most cases, but just finding ways in my normal day-to-day -to, -day to build relationships that lead to gospel intentionality. That's great. I love that there's a Venn diagram of how we approach this. There's the, a little bit of the overlap and there's also the, okay, these. These people probably want something specific. How do I move myself to their space too? And it's really beautiful and I'm excited. I'm, I'm even more excited about this conversation now with you guys sharing. So you talked about, okay, every day it's a way of life. You talked about figuring out what they want. Now, it seems like to me that this last year, those kind of got blown up. Our ways of life were completely flipped upside down in, in a lot of different ways. Even I think maybe how people express what they want were a little bit different. Would you all, uh, could, you, could you share a little bit of what you what you noticed this year of how how those things changed and some of the spaces you all found yourself in that were leading the opportunities to share your faith or leading students in your ministries to share their faith as well? Yeah, so the ways that I saw it uh, shift, it, it like shifted, but also like didn't shift. Like um, I think one way that like, I think one of the approaches I have to like ministry and evangelism has very much been like, what are things that I'm like gifted in or passionate about? And like, how do I use that to like connect with people? Um, whether it's like having them over for meals, like that would be a great way to like build relationship with people. Um, but then COVID happens. So instead it looked like dropping off food at people's doors and like helping them see like, Hey, I still see you and I still care about you. Like, and then like texting them, like asking like, how are you doing in the meantime too? Um, so just like still finding ways to connect, uh, and continue conversations or, um, helping, like, I feel like it turned into a lot of like, how do we meet people's needs, even if they like, don't name them necessarily, which ended up being a lot of food related things for me, like getting students groceries and, uh, having things dropped off at their doors. So, um, yeah, I think that's just one of the ways that, uh, I've seen like, yeah, leaning into it is always like helping, helping see them and, and meeting them where they're at. Yeah, I think you said something really key there is it didn't really change. It's still a matter of how do we see people and meet them there and really appreciate you sharing that. So for, for me, I would say um, a lot changed. We were, we were just, 
okay, we were a new church plant, right? So we, we had just moved over um, in 2000, really kind of gotten started maybe 2019, 2000, maybe 2018, but we had, we had just been getting in the, on a roll. We'd had to do a lot of like building up and then we had, we were, were working with a lot of non-believers uh, often in our home groups. And so uh, just moral failure and having to kind of start over with things falling apart. Um, and so we finally felt like we had some sustainable growth that was building some momentum. And, and, and what I mean by finally is literally spring break, we had a spring break trip. We had a, a, an event right before spring break where we had the biggest numbers we ever had. We had four new people come to home group on that one week um, just crazy momentum that we had never seen before. We had an amazing mission week on spring break and then school camp. Like it was just, we, we didn't see most of those new people because, you know, um, we just met them. There was no rapport to say, oh no, keep joining the community. They'd be like, well, you're weird. Like we were, they were excited about us and then there was no opportunity. And so the idea of, of mobilizing those new people and doing our old system, um, the campus, well, the campus shut down completely. We were completely on Zoom. So there, there was no evangelism in the way that we had set it up. Uh, furthermore, we didn't have any of those new people. We couldn't keep reaching out to them uh, or we tried, but most failed and it was pretty depressing I, I i probably i mean this summer this last summer i i was pretty depressed about it i was like lord i i feel like this is my responsibility as one of the key evangelism staff in our uh church plant i feel like this is my responsibility and i can't do it without god period and now it's like what do we do lord and I wanted to give up. I mean, I know a lot of people are quitting right now and it makes sense. It's hard to do our job when we can't meet together. And, and it was a, it was a big trial time. And, and in reality, I don't know if I can get into the hope that I've experienced and without going into one of the, some of the things that God has shown us, but it pretty much killed every single avenue that we had that was working so yeah thanks kyle for for sharing honestly about that and i'm excited to to get to that hope here in, in a second but alfonso what what do you got for us yeah um so i feel like uh, a lot of things did change for so many obviously so many people i don't know that like uh when covid first started um, we were right in the middle of getting ready to actually, we're getting ready to go plan a mission trip uh, for spring break. And we, I remember sitting in this same office, getting all the details ready. Then it's like, all right, beach reach is canceled. Um, and uh, school's closed, everything's closed. And so everything had to be done virtually. Um, and so really for a lot of, I, I know staff here, that, that kind of hurts some of our ability um, and just meeting new people. Um, the, the thing that I do feel like ended up serving a need was like there were many students and this is where like the creativity had to come into play. So it's like, we're, what do we do with the people who are on the fringe that were coming around um, that we've been trying to reach? And it's like, hey, that might mean we're reaching out to them um, via text message to just see how they're doing. Um, and which was like a lot of what we were doing early on in COVID. Um, and then the summertime rolls around. Um, and when things warmed up, people were outside. Um, and so that's kind of where the, the change happened of like, okay, well, there's people. We, we get to see people um, outside, even if it means I'm like across the street, um, you know, but things on, on our campus are really strict. So we didn't get to be on campus as much. Um, we did a little bit of water bottle pass out during, during the fall um, and stuff like that. But it just wasn't the same where we could, you know, have our normal ways of connecting with students because things are just kind of weird. And um, 
you know, people didn't really want to engage as much because of COVID. Um, and so that, that has really made uh, sharing uh, faith personally a lot harder um, when there's not as many people that you can just meet um, on a regular basis. It's different when a college is full, you walk on campus, you're sitting somewhere and you can easily have a conversation with a person um, or if you're having a tent out on campus, someone walks up, you offer them something, and then, hey, you're engaging um, in a conversation about spirituality right then and there. A, a lot of that was kind of shot. Um, and so you just had to, what I, the, one of the things we, like with the question um, is like, what have I noticed? Being more creative. <laughs> That's probably the biggest thing I've noticed that we've had to be a lot more creative in in what we do um, and, find, and finding ways to, to share our faith. Yeah, that's good. Well, let, that's a that's a perfect segue into, um, yeah, what what have you guys noticed in the sense of what have you learned? What's God been showing you? Uh, Kyle, you mentioned like what you learned that's like leading to hope. And uh, before we get to to like looking too far ahead, but just what what from this last year, what have you guys seen in the creativity, in the innovation? maybe in the sense of getting back to basics in a whole new way, uh, whatever, whatever that looked like in your context, what, what does it look like for you to, what has God been showing you and, and leading you all to walk in and um, in, in everything that was so disrupted? Um, I think here, um, one of the things here at BG um, that we started to consider was, well, how do we, how do we train up our students um, to be able to share their faith more often. Um, and so we started to do some like evangel, like, so we started a, a pretty much like an evangelism cohort um, to equip our students. Um, and so that, that was out of the book tactics. So we started that this, this past semester, but in the fall um, when things were definitely warm out, we actually started to have, um, so BG's at a party school, um, even though there wasn't as many students as normal, out on Friday and Saturday nights, we actually started to do some, uh, some just some, some cold turkey evangelism. <laughs> um, and so that was one way where it was just like, okay, how do we share our faith and help others do the same? Well, let's equip them, let's pray for them, um, let's, let's talk to them about what sharing the gospel looks like, what are the core tenets of the gospel, even when you're sharing it. Okay, and well, since building normal relationships on campus is hard, you're not in the classroom with people really everything's online. Uh, we know that there are still some people here in Bowling Green, but where, 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 do, where do they go? Like, where can we find them? Oh, they like to go out on Friday night. Okay, well, how about we find a way to go and evangelize um, to those people who might be out um, in BG? So, I mean, the, that was kind of like the, the way that we started to try to consider thinking of like, what are just some easier ways to meet people um, where they're, where, where they are at, if we can't do what we normally do. Um, and so that's just like kind of one example of what we did, um, this past year, um, of trying to, trying to share our faith, but also train up our students to be able to do the same. And then too, one of the things that I also was thinking about that actually happened a bunch in my life over the last year with COVID is looking at where, um, where are the people who are currently in my life that might not even be in my ministry context all the time that I can be sharing my faith with? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I remember having tons, of, like over the last year, I had lots of conversations with old friends, like people that I hadn't talked to in ages. Um, and it's like, hey, I get an opportunity to kind of talk about Jesus a little bit. Um, Cause then at that moment, people are kind of wrestling with life and what is COVID and what is hope and what's going to happen after I die is like, um, I'm, 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 I'm wrestling with these spiritual things. Can we talk about them? Um, and so, so even in our ministry context, we found different ways, but even in personal life, I've seen that like, okay, many people are hurting and need these things. Um, and so how can I be present in those moments and, and bring the gospel to those people as well? Um, okay, so basically for us with this year, you know, things were kind of really low. And in addition to kind of losing a lot of this 
amazing momentum that we were all excited about. We also started to have some debate on how to do ministry uh, and how to do ministry well, uh, because some people wanted to be more cautious. Other people were like, you know, spiritual is all we should be going for. And there's just a lot of, um, it, it created some, some team dynamics that made it difficult for us to function well. And at one point, we don't want to make people feel uncomfortable, but at the same time, obviously it can inhibit ministry. And so we had to do a lot of team building first. That was one of the biggest things for us to, um, to be able to reach out to others is we had to be on the same page as the team. And it was, it was very difficult. Um, but in the process of us kind of wrestling through what are, what can we agree on? Um, there, one of the biggest philosophy concepts that have helped me with evangelism, and I forgot exactly where I got it. If someone remembers what book I read, <laughs> you can quote it. But basically it was to look for a neutral space that there's our spaces where, you know, we can invite people in and if they're willing to come, then that's, that's great. Uh, and then there's their spaces that we can go to their space, but in reality, they don't really want to hear about our stuff at their space. Uh, and then there's neutral spaces, spaces like a bar, places like a park, places um, like a campus classroom where you're there, you're both there for different reasons, but you can, you can connect. And, and so if you look for the neutral spaces, so we, the question we had to ask ourselves is where are the neutral spaces in this new world? And um, the first thing that we thought of is um, to just create a flyer and put it on all the people's dorms that, um, and I wish I had a picture of one for you. Uh, if I can find it, maybe I'll send it to you, you can show it. But Basically, it, it had a, are you interested in Christian community at the top of the page? And it had arrows and it had, um, I, I, it said something like, you know, I want to meet in person and on this side. And then it said, um, or no, it said online on this side. And, and then it just had a little QR code that they could scan and, and, message us and then the other side it says i want to meet in community and then it broke off again and it just had a lot of jokes in it that my wife made it and it was just funny but it also gave options and um i think one of them was like i'm getting out of this apartment another part was like or i think the qr code was like yeah if you did let us meet in person um it was like get me out of this apartment and if it was the online one the qr code said you know, give me friends, but don't give me COVID, you know, and it just kind of had this like funny feel to it. it felt like a college student did it. And it was wildly successful. We got a lot of new people from that. We pay, posted it everywhere. We did get a little bit, some people were like, I mean, we didn't say our name of our ministry anywhere. It was just looked like a college student put it up, but a lot of people were like, yes, please. And what we learned is that a lot of people, um, a lot of the college students actually in the time where none of these other competing groups are looking for um, people to join their yacht club or their whatever you know club it is, um, we now have less competition for Jesus. And we, we just have, we care more about our group than they care about theirs. They're like, hey, you know, the yacht club is not worth getting COVID over where we're like, it's not like we were going to be safe, but at the same time, Jesus is bit better. This is worth it. We're going to do whatever we can to keep this group going. And, um, and so we saw a lot of people that were desperate. And I think about when Jesus says, I come for the sick, I come for the, the hopeless. Um, a lot of people that were desperate for community and that were lonely when we offered them an option, even though we made it safe and we did social distancing, we offered an option in person. It, it was wildly successful. Most of our growth was from the in-person home groups, not the online one. Um, and then since that, that was our first big boost, our first big break in um, 
in the COVID world of evangelism, got a lot of new freshmen. We have more freshmen this year. We probably have three times as many freshmen this year than we've ever gotten. Um, and so that was a big break for us. And then after that, um, I was able to adapt um, something we had been doing that was giving our, us our big break after two years of church planning. We were finally getting that momentum was uh, Solarium. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, it's um, it's I think it's made by Campus Crusade, and it's just a bunch of pictures um, that are kind of intriguing, and you get people to answer five questions. You know, where has your life been? Describe your life up until this point using three of these pictures. Uh, where is your life going to go using three of these pictures? Uh, pick one picture that best describes your view of God. Pick one picture that describes your view, your religious experiences up until this point, and then pick one picture that describes your religious experiences going that you want them to see in the future. And in once they finish answering those five questions, it is you feel like you know each other so well, and they are so grateful. Even when they find out we're a Christian group, they're like, "You're getting me to think about good things. You're not being pushy about your because we've got a very anti." Christian campus. And so for them to, um, they're really sensitive to Christians push, being pushy. And so they're like, man, I love this. I want to be part of your group. I want to, I want to get to, I want to be around more people like this that will draw me out, but I don't feel like you're being pushy. The problem was with COVID, we couldn't even do it indoors. We were doing this hall, this hallway, um, and they closed down even the campus buildings. So we couldn't even interact with people indoors and the cards would blow away in the wind. And so what we did is we laminated, we did a big, huge lamination thing. So you can see here, you got all the, the solarium pictures and they're just kind of random pictures, but we have them in these nine sheets. And, um, and so now we put out the nine sheets, the wind won't blow it away. And we do the same thing. People uh, point to them. Uh, they use the number on them or whatever, and they they tell us about their life, and um, we we get new people every week, um, mm -hmm. or not every week, but like on average every week. Like the, we are ex we are experiencing new people, uh, connecting with new people in meaningful ways every single week. Um, we are getting many of them to come join the group, um, and it is very easy to mobilize our students to do it. Uh, because all you do is the five questions. You just sit there on these on our camping chairs on the other side of these pictures. And when someone walks by, you say, you have time to answer five questions? And it's so natural and easy to get people to answer these five questions. And by the end of it, you are getting... The, the other day, I'm, there was a, um, a Muslim and a Hindu who they were friends and they were both talking about how much they love their religion growing up, which was very rare. Most of the time, people are just agnostic on our campuses, almost all the time. And if anyone had a good experience religious, it was Christian. But um, but at the end, I was just like, man, we, um, we want to point people closer to God and see people live the fullness of life that Jesus promised. And we do believe that Jesus is God, but we uh, we want to connect people with Jesus and his teachings. Jesus is everything for us. And both of them said they were interested in coming to the group. And so it's, it's just crazy how when you, when you ask so many questions of someone else and draw them out, they're kind of like, oh, you guys must be um, open. You guys must be, because the fact that you would even let me talk so much. And it's really sweet. I'm loving it. It is, it has been, and of course we're wearing masks, uh, which sometimes you have to pull it down, but you're over six feet apart when you do it, you pull it down so that they can hear you better. But it's a, it's a way to be safe. Campus has not given us any trouble and we can just be outside in any walking area. And it's been, it's been amazing. Love it. Thanks, Kyle. Oh my goodness. I was writing out a bunch of ideas, but thank you for that. Um, I feel like the the number one thing that came to mind, like something that I'm like learning, uh, and I hope other people are too, <laughs> uh, is just that like the Lord 
is like working in people's lives like learning to trust that like so much more um just like i mean i've seen that both like through evangelism or discipleship of like the 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 things that like the lord is putting on people's hearts and like they bring forward uh so often uh and that's true even uh especially during covid um and so that's like the number one thing but then the other like slightly more practical like how has it impacted like what we've done on campus and like learning here um i i think our campus our, our pastors are great and like really encourage us to like, draw on the dirt is the the phrase they use uh, and it's led to like a lot of creative ideas which was happening even before covid so i feel like when when that happened it was like oh it was I already felt like the invitation to like, yeah, dream big, you know, they often, I don't think they've ever given me a hard no of like, that's too crazy of an idea. Um, normally they come up with like even crazier versions of what I thought of. So, um, and so it's like led to like great opportunities to like love the students of our campus. So like on a very practical level, it's like, we're going to provide meals and like for Thanksgiving, we, worked with like several apartment complexes asking like hey can we give away like those free thanksgiving meals on your campus or like at your complex um and just for students to take and they like loved that we were doing it um and these are apartment complexes that were like when covid was first starting to happen and we were trying to like is there places that we could still do stuff they're like hard no who are you we don't want to do anything with you guys uh but then uh we've been able to like be on their property handing out meals uh, I'm also a big fan of the QR codes. Uh, I do little surveys almost on everything that I do. And it's like, there's no cost to it. It's like, hey, here's a free meal. And if you want to take like literally 30 seconds to fill out the survey, we would love for you to do that. Uh, I often offer gift cards, not going to lie, uh, to help incentivize them. And every time that we've had like QR code, like little surveys on there, it's been an opportunity of like, hey, do you want to have a spiritual conversation with somebody? Are you interested in like an online Bible study? Like multiple different options. And every single time there's at least one person, if not multiple, who are like, hey, yes, I want to get connected. Or, hey, I want to talk to somebody about my spiritual journey. Um, and even like one of the ones that we did was like during the winter exam time, it's freezing, especially here in Michigan. And like very cold day, handing out exam survival kits and um like we had someone who was like just thankful that we like cared enough about them to like stand out in the cold like that people notice like that we care about them um and i don't remember if it was kyle or afonso but like talking about like being on campus or not being on campus but like engaging with students um at the beginning of the fall like i feel like the only people i saw trying to like engage with students were the christian organizations whether it was like crew or university like i ran into them all the time on campus and i didn't see anybody else no yacht club, you know, um, but it was just cool to see like, yeah, we like genuinely love these students and we're going to find creative ways to do it. That's still safe. Cause like Western here had like very intense policies with COVID and uh, we were still able to work with them. Like they like love that we were still there and trying to like engage with their students. Um, but also like doing it in a way that like respects their like policies and guidelines. Awesome. Thanks Anna Lisa. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a little bit of a curveball from the questions initially sent you, and because you've already shared stories of encouragement, you've shared some of the things of hope, but we've got just a few minutes left. Maybe time for everybody to share one more time. Just what what's what's just something that God maybe has put on your heart that you still want to share? Maybe it's an maybe it is another encouraging story. Maybe it's something you're looking forward to, something you're seeing develop and happen. And uh, just give you guys space to share. Maybe it's just an exhortation to our other brothers and sisters in other campuses. Um, whatever else you want to share, we'll make space for it now. I can share. Um, I feel like uh, I'm in a place where I'm, I'm just like longing for God to um, have a huge movement upon like our campuses um, and in our lives with just people um, where people um, are just so much more open instead of closed off to wanting to know Christ. Um, and just because if you think about like the political climate, the cultural climate, people are really hostile towards Christianity right now. Um, and I'm just hoping that God would just bring like a huge softening um, of hearts. Uh, and, the, and then even if that doesn't happen, the other thing that I'm hoping for is that God would equip us with even more boldness 
um, for the gospel, more opportunities to share the gospel. Um, it always reminds me of Paul's prayers when he's asking for boldness. He's asking for opportunities um, that the gospel may go forth. That's what I'm praying and hoping for um, is that uh, there would be so much more opportunities for us to uh, meet people, share our faith, and to just love on people, especially in, in, in the times that we're in. Um, and so I, I, I'm just, I, I've seen glimpses of that in so many ways in my, in my own life and on our campus and even just hearing all of your stories and encouragement and just seeing like how God's just moving. Um, there, like there's tons of stories that I think of here of like people I was trying to share the gospel with for so long, finally starting to eyes open, God's <laughs> moving in their lives and they're repenting of sin and um, turning and following Jesus. Uh, it's just, I've, I've definitely seen it and I'm just hoping for more of that. Um, Christ, uh, uh, just a huge move of, of his spirit uh, uh, upon the earth. Um, and so that's just like my like final little encouragement and thing that I'm hoping that God will do um, moving forward. I, amen. I, 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 that resonates with a lot that I've been thinking of too, of Lord, would you use this time to soften hearts and maybe even more so make us bold with your good news. That's good. Thank you for that, Alfonso. Uh, Kyle, you want to go next? Man, I think I feel like I feel like I shared a lot already. Uh, okay. I'm very encouraged. Uh, I think that okay, I, I, it's very similar um, to what Alfonso said, but um, I do think right now is an opportunity for us to identify not a ton, but it's a little bit more with first century Christians. Um, where Christianity might be a little bit more opposed. And I think that being above reproach is great. You know, we wear masks when we do evangelism. We, we, we work hard to be safe. Uh, but at the same time, we believe that connecting with Jesus and connecting with community is, is more valuable than dying. <laughs> and, and we believe it strongly. And we're willing to connect we're willing to do what it takes. And so if we can be above reproach to where people can't pin us on anything, but we're being very different where we have a chance to shine right now. Um, that is special and unique. And honestly, there's a lot of people that are desperate for it in ways that they can't get it anymore. There, there are groups out there that used to give them a fake version of community and those groups aren't even giving it to them anymore. Our job is just to go find them and it makes it easy for us. And it makes it easier for us. And so let's use the advantage that we have right now that we're so unique. Let's be unapologetic, um, being wise as serpents, but being unapologetic about how we go about bringing people into the kingdom. Love it. Love it. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, I think I just want to share one more encouraging story. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know me, some of my background is uh, I was actually anti-evangelism would be a little strong, but like very not for evangelism uh, all throughout college, uh, even like my first year on staff. Um, and but in those times, like as a student, like, you know, they'd be encouraging evangelism all the time. And I was like, I will, I will try and talk to one person probably in the course of four years, if I'm honest. And uh, what's been cool is like, like even like this past week, one, that one friend from college, like reached out and was like asking about like, not so much faith, but like, you know, where do I find like hope and trust uh, or peace in, in this crazy season kind of thing. Um, and the thing that's been like, so cool about that is like, I think it goes back to like trust in the Lord. Like the Lord is like working in people's hearts and minds. Um, and even if we're like, like, we don't know when someone's life is going to change. Um, we can just be like faithful with what we have. Um, and that's true. Even in COVID it's like, we, we are just called to be faithful and, uh, we each have an opportunity to step into that. So that friend, maybe someday we'll trust the Lord, but I get to keep loving her, uh, all this time. Beautiful. Thanks, Annalisa. Well, thank you all for, for making time just, just to share a little bit. I, I think in all the things you shared, I, there's like 
hours of conversations I want to have with each one of you and just share the hope that maybe one day when collegiate gets together again, we can just have just have storytelling spaces. Of, okay, it's been a while. Let's reconnect a bit of a family reunion. Before I let you go, though, I'm going to ask you a completely different sort of silly question uh, just to kind of share a little bit about you guys a little bit more, which is... Uh, what is what is one new thing you are personally hoping to try in this next year? It doesn't have to be evangelism related. Maybe it's a food, a restaurant's open. Maybe you got a game you're into, or maybe you're like, I don't know, and that's fine too. But what's one new thing you're hoping to try in this next year? So one thing that I'm pretty excited about doing this next year, and this is a crazy concept that you guys may not it's gonna be hard to grab, get your mind around this, but the idea of all of us collegiate staff getting together in the same place in one room sounds really fun and exciting. And so that would be the thing that I'm probably most excited about work-wise is connecting with you guys. I know it's crazy, but that sounds awesome. Mine's in a, in a different vein. I'm just going to be real honest. Uh, I love cooking and baking. And if I can, I want to like challenge myself all the time. And so I'm sure there's probably a very long list of recipes I want to try. But one that I could come to mind while you're here is I want to try making like a like gluten-free, flour-free, whatever. Um, what is it called? Chicken pot pie. That's what it is. I love chicken pot pie. And apparently my friends tell me I make a really good one. But the challenge is, can I make it without regular flour? We'll find out. Love it. Love it. This is a great question that I don't have a great answer to. Um, but I don't know. I I am I would I think I'm on the side of Kyle right now, man. I feel like I just want to be around people mm -hmm. and, and, and actually give hugs. <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> give, give hugs unapologetic, unapologetically um, would be something I'm hoping to try this upcoming year um, with people I haven't seen in quite a while. So love yeah. it. Love it. Yeah, and we'll we'll have some of Aunt Lisa's pot pie to bring us all together too. We'll have a meal, some hugs, and that'll be that'll be great. Well, uh, Aunt Lisa, Alfonso, Kyle from Michigan, Ohio, and Texas, thank you all for for this time. And to anyone who has been watching uh, or listening to this, thank you for joining. This has been another co collegiate conversation, and we will see you next time.